Right. Here is here's a question for also all those who think these slogans wise. And what she's talking about is the slogans of Rosaria saying, God calls some people to carry many burdens and other people to carry fewer burdens. Which I didn't think was a disputable point. Is it the prosperity gospel? Because again, what Rosaria is saying is, if you tell people, as soon as you're converted, healthy, wealthy, wise, your teeth are straightened, your legs are even, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that's the prosperity gospel. Is it the prosperity gospel to expect converted KKK marchers to grow out of their desire to lynch? Are we weighing on the cross of pedophiles if we expect that at some time in their sanctification they will no longer want to fondle toddlers and instead want a wife? What about those oriented to have sex with barn animals or murder their wives? Wait, what's that you say? No, of course not, because those are heinous sins out of the norm of mature Christian experience. Abominations? Oh, just checking. So, you have the assertion, isn't it obvious? Not, not, I did find it interesting. To grow out of their desire to lynch. Well, how long is that going to take? I think that's what I was just saying. But how do you get the converted KKK marcher to grow out of their desire to lynch? Doesn't there need to be the communication of divine truth about the fact that there is only one race and that um, their prejudice and hatred is completely in opposition to the purpose of God in their lives? And there needs to be teaching, and so there needs to be growth in loving what God loves and hence not loving what God hates. Yeah. But is that really the same thing as same-sex attraction? The idea here is there's no difference whatsoever. Um, that wanting to kill your wife is the same thing as same-sex attraction. I think that's a naive view of things, but the idea is, well, they're all abominations, so therefore everything that's abomination is all the same, you see. And so pastorally, it's all going to be the same answer. Well, I suppose on one hand, you, you can say pastorally, it's always going to be the same answer, Jesus. But that's not answering the actual question. So this is a um, sarcastic way of throwing fire or throwing gasoline on the fire rather than actually dealing with the pastoral reality. I, I don't know if, I can't see why she would, but I don't know if Diane Gaskins has ever sat and talked with someone who will pour their heart out to you about how they want to honor God in their life, and yet they're still years after conversion, experiencing same-sex attraction. I've had that happen. I don't know whether, I, I can't see that it would be appropriate for her, but I've had that happen. And just simply saying, well, pfft, what if you're a former KKK guy? Just get over it. Is that really the answer? And was that put in there to help people in, in this situation or to be a backsided hope for refutation of what she's actually struggling with and, and, and stating to us. I don't know. I, I was just going to say, I, 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 if you take the incendiary out of that statement, I don't read someone who understands what's being expressed to them at all. I don't. Not at all. She just, she, she's just going right past it no, and, and there's, there's a purposeful nature to it, because a couple paragraphs later, Rosaria Butterfield regularly states that she is against the term gay Christian because it denotes an identity. But taking the above points together, if SSA is something one is born with, something God does not necessarily move for one's entire life, is a God-given cross to bear, and qualifies one to membership in an oppressed real community, how is that this not an identity and a God-honoring one at that? So this is, this is string together the worst spin you can put 
on everything above and then go, oh, she may say that, but she doesn't really mean that. Yeah, that's right. What that actually is, is I'm going to read her in the worst possible way. I'm going to spin each one of these things. You know, when she talks about real community thing, there's a whole long section about um, that, that I didn't get into. But spin everything as best you can. String that together and say, she may say this, but it doesn't really mean what she wants you to think it's going to mean. The reality is this is someone who I, I'm not going to say could not understand Dr. Butterfield's position, but doesn't want to, has a reason not to. Uh, that seems to be the best explanation for how uh, this kind of thing is going to uh, find its way into print. 